I've made a lot of desk setups. Long time subscribers will know that I am obsessed with trying to get the perfect setup. I've shared quite a few videos on this channel sharing a number of those different setups. I've been working from home since before that was even a thing. It's been 13 years now that I've had a dedicated desk setup at every home that I've lived in and at every office that I've rented. I've bought and used a ton of different desks, chairs, monitors, and all sorts of other desk accessories. I like to think I know which desk upgrades actually matter and what it takes to make a good setup that's both ergonomic and not a waste of money. When setting up a new desk, the first thing I do is look for the perfect desk for that specific space, as every space is different, so I like to make sure the desk matches. However, there is one important factor that I feel like a lot of people don't think about enough when choosing a desk, and that is the actual depth of the desk itself. Having a deep desk is important if you're going to be there for hours at a time, as you'll need room to rest your arms on it when typing. If your arms aren't either resting on the armrest of your chair or the desk, you'll quickly start getting aching pains in your trapezius muscles, the muscles that are here and here. I've noticed if I don't have anything resting, like if, I, if I'm not resting my elbows anywhere, over time, because you're sort of slouching and your arms are sort of like this, you end up just getting uncomfortable aching pains in those muscles. Because my office is quite roomy, I've gone with a large 180 centimeter wide and 80 centimeter deep desk. I've then put it on a frame that gives me the option to turn it into a standing desk. I bought them both separately as I was looking for this specific color combination. With a desk this big, I have room for everything I need within arm's reach. When it comes to desk recommendations, I actually don't think the brand matters that much. Price will simply vary depending on the features and materials. All that matters is getting a desk that fits your specific purpose and has standing functionality. But for those wondering, I'll of course leave links to the tabletop and the frame that I'm using down in the description below. The next part of the setup and probably the most important is the chair. A lot of people will simply use a chair they already have, like a dining table chair or buy a chair they feel like they think looks good. They haven't actually thought about the ergonomics of the chair itself. A general rule that I like to apply to my life that I've got it from somewhere else, but I can't actually remember exactly where, is that whatever is separating yourself from the floor, I think is worth spending money on. So things like an office chair, a good mattress, a good pair of shoes, these sorts of things are separating you from the hardness of the floor that I feel like it's just worth spending a little bit of money to make sure you get a sufficient level of comfort. Please do not buy a gaming chair. I don't even understand why gaming chairs are popular. They're not ergonomic, they don't look good, and they're just gonna end up giving you back problems later in life. Please avoid gaming chairs if you can. The specific chair I'm using is the Herman Miller Aeron, which is known as the GOAT when it comes to office chairs. It has an absolute ton of adjustability and is specially designed to be as ergonomic as possible. However, this chair is not cheap at over $1,000 new, so the two cheaper alternatives I would recommend are the IKEA Marcus chair or one from Sihu, I think it's called. The main requirements I think you should consider when choosing an office chair is height adjustability and armrest adjustability. The height needs to be at a position where your feet can rest flat on the floor and the armrest height needs to be in line with your desk so that you can rest your arms on there if you can't rest them on the desk itself. The desk and the chair is important to get right from the beginning as they will most likely be the two things you keep the longest in your desk setup. So you want to make sure they last. So when it comes to monitors, I feel like they are very highly preference based. So I'm not going to be recommending any specific monitors, but I did want to share what I think you should be considering when choosing a monitor for your setup. First thing of course is how many monitors. I think many people go through the phase of thinking they need multiple monitors to be ultra productive. I'm not going to lie, I was definitely one of those people. I used to think that I need like three or four or five different monitors to be super productive. And yeah, I kind of just realized that isn't the case. I just much prefer having one large monitor. What I've noticed as well is that if I do need an extra secondary monitor, I can just use the monitor on my MacBook. But even then, I rarely ever actually use the monitor on my MacBook. My personal monitor that I have in this specific setup is the Apple Pro Display XDR. And I do also have a studio display at home. And there's a few reasons as to why I chose these monitors. First up is they are very high resolution monitors that are ideal for my workflow. The Pro Display XDR specifically is 6K resolution. That resolution gives me a ton of screen estate, but is also still very sharp. I primarily do design work, video editing, and photo editing. For design work especially, the resolution and screen estate is very important. It also only requires one cable to connect to my MacBook, so it's quick and easy to get going when I get into the office in the mornings. The way I see it is that if a product is going to help me get my work done quicker and more efficiently, 
then it's worth the investment. The wallpaper. So I'm biased here as I sell my own wallpapers, but I'm obsessed with regularly changing wallpapers. There's something about having a new wallpaper that gives my setup a whole new look and feel. Wallpapers for me can affect my mood, they can motivate me, or just match a certain aesthetic I'm going for. I'll of course leave links to all of my wallpapers down in the description below. Next up, I want to share an awesome app called Workspaces, who are also sponsoring this video. Something I do often is move between very different projects. So I might be working on a video, I might work on a website or something like that. I have to keep changing those apps, I have to keep shutting down apps, opening apps. Workspaces helps solve this problem. So for example, when editing a video, I need to open up Notion for the video notes. I need to open up Final Cut Pro for the edit and I need to open up Finder for the video clips. Workspaces is an app that can do all that for me with one click. Another example is when setting up my development environment for making a website. I need to open up Visual Studio Code, Figma for the design, Safari, and I might even have a relevant music playlist to help me stay focused. Workspaces makes it super easy to set up different apps, files, folders, emails, and a bunch, bunch more. All you have to do is run a workspace and it opens up everything for you. Then when you're done, it can close it all for you too. You can customize what the actions do, whether you want something to happen immediately, with a delay, or even when you've finished. You also don't have to launch a whole workspace if you want to get to a specific action. Maybe there's something within a workspace that you want to access. You can launch those individually, but still take advantage of Workspaces doing the automation. So make sure to check out Workspaces. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. I have my monitor on a monitor stand, but if you don't have a deep desk, I would highly recommend getting a monitor arm instead. They will take up significantly less room on your desk and are also fairly affordable. Prices for them can vary depending on materials and functionality. If you do have the room though, a desk shelf could also add more space to your desk as well as bringing up the level of your monitor. It might not look as minimal, but I added a desk shelf to my setup recently and have been loving it. It gives me more room for little things such as my Dyson fan remote, SD cards, and any other sort of small little belongings. I also have room underneath for other things that I need quick access to. Because I like having my laptop open next to my monitor, I prefer having a laptop stand to raise the MacBook. It now brings it more alongside my monitor, making it easier to move windows across to it. The monitor stand that I have here is from Ugmunk, but I'll also leave links to some other alternatives that are height adjustable. Having a desk light I think is a must, whether it's a lamp, LED lighting strips, or a monitor light bar. I found that having a light that can light up my desk area and even change color temperature more useful than I ever thought it would be. I have a pretty unique desk light here. It's called the Logitech Lightro Beam, and it's actually a key light for video streams but it can be doubled up to be a desk light as it's so versatile. You can put it into various different configurations. It's really down to preference and you can change the brightness as well as the color temperature. Next up is the mouse and keyboard. And when it comes to mice and keyboard, I feel like there is so much choice out there that you should be able to find whatever you like. I've tried many different mice and I just keep personally going back to the Magic Mouse. For me, it's the one that's been the most useful due to how well it's integrated with Mac. I've been using it for over 10 years now and I've had no issues apart from the god awful way of charging it, of course. However, if the Magic Mouse is uncomfortable for you, there's the Logitech MX Master 3S and the Logi Lift. These two mice are the ones that I keep recommending to people looking for an ergonomic productivity mouse. I've also made a dedicated video sharing my favorite mice, so make sure to check that out. For the keyboard, I'm currently using the Magic Keyboard. I personally like the shallow key travel and the compact size. I think it's well worth spending the money on a keyboard for two main reasons. It's probably the most touched thing on your desk, so it definitely needs to hold up, and it can make or break your productivity. A good keyboard will help you type faster and get things done quicker. Alongside the Magic Keyboard, I recommend the Nufi Air 75 and the MX Mechanical Mini. I also, again, have a dedicated video showing my favorite keyboards right now, so make sure to check that out. When it comes to desk mats, again, I'm a bit biased here, but a desk mat is a must. I have this full grain leather one from ULX. It has a smooth, shiny leather finish to it, which is ideal for a mouse. It gives my desk a bit of texture and warmth that you won't get with a bare desktop. So I don't think this one is totally necessary, but it's definitely an upgrade worth having. In every setup that I've had, I've always had a set of external speakers. I just much prefer listening to music through speakers. I'd much prefer listening to podcasts through speakers, and of course, watching video. There's just something about it for speakers that it's just a lot more convenient than having to mess around with earbuds or headphones. And because I'm usually working alone or maybe with one other person, 
I'm not really interfering with them or other people around me. So it's just for me, makes a lot more sense. The speakers that I have are the Bose Companion 50s. I've had these speakers since 2015, which is wild as that is a pretty long time. They have been absolutely faultless in my ownership. One of the best desk upgrades I've made, but unfortunately they don't sell them anymore. So I'll leave links to some other alternatives that I would recommend. Now that most phones have wireless charging, it only makes sense to have a wireless charger on your desk. It also means your phone is always charged up so you don't have to worry about the battery so much. I actually have two wireless chargers on my desk. I have the Oki Wood MagSafe charger on my desk shelf. This one is used to charge my iPhone and also gives me the ability to turn my phone sideways so I can take advantage of standby mode. Below the desk shelf, I have a Nomad 3-in-1 charger, which is used to charge any other phones that I might have, AirPods and my Apple Watch. I'd highly recommend getting an all-in-one charger if you can. Having one place to charge all of your devices quickly means no having to worry about low battery. And these are just some of the desk upgrades that I would recommend. If you have any recommendations yourself, please leave them in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out my full desk tour video that I published earlier in the year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.